So here's my emphatic note, and I'm going to end with you know a quote, a couple of quotes from some famous people. We started the course, course with the first quote by Dijkstra, which basically says that you know this high technology that is so celebrated today, i.e. the computer, is essentially a mathematical technology. And then, you know, uh, the second quote is, you know, to err is human. So we're all going to make errors now and again. But to really foul things up, you need a computer. Okay. Now, so, so, you know, so just, so just bear these two uh, quotes in mind, you know, in your future career path. And I want you to take the role of a programmer, for example, or writing computer programs or writing algorithms to solve problems very seriously. Okay. And in order to convince you to do that, I have listed you know, a whole bunch of disasters okay, that have occurred in the past, and they are primarily due to you know, computer algorithm malfunctions. And I'll go through a couple of them. Okay. The most, the, the, one of the interesting ones is sort of in 1983, when we almost had World War III. Okay. So, you know, the Soviets had some you know, automatic missile detection system to detect missiles coming from the U.S., now, it turns out that the clouds, so what, what does this de detection system try to detect? It tries to detect me metallic flying objects that are flying at, you know, incredible speeds towards various cities in uh, Russia, like Moscow. Okay. Now, it turns out that on a particular day, okay, um, you know, the clouds were such and the reflections were such that, you know, everything looked like metallic things flying through the uh, sky with all these various reflections. And so the whole system went into red alert mode, red alert, red alert. And the way it was geared was, you know, when this happens, we're going to fire back. And if that had happened, boom, it would have been World War III because there were no missiles coming from the U.S. Okay. So the operator, the guy sitting there operating, you know, was thinking to himself, you know what? Could this be? Surely Russia is worth more than five missiles. So the system had detected five missiles coming over and thinking, no, if, they, if, if the Americans are going to attack us, they're going to use more than five missiles. We are surely worth more than five missiles. So he didn't pull the trigger because of that gut feeling that, you know, five missiles doesn't, doesn't sound right. Okay. Imagine software bug. Well, it's not that it was really a software bug. You know, you've got to be careful. You've got to test all the boundary conditions. You've got to prove that your system works. The Therac 25 okay, was a radiation therapy machine and it gave sometimes by accident, by concurrent programming errors, it gave 100 times, 1,000 times the, the, the necessary dose of radiation, in some cases killing patients. Software bug? Okay. Tesla self-driving car you know, failed, quote unquote, failed to detect a truck and so crashes in, one person dead. And the interesting ones that are going on these days, and they, it, it's not like they're super rare. So the most recent example of an airline disaster is this Boeing Max fiasco, okay, where, you know, roughly speaking, 346 people dead. Okay. Um, so what was the problem there? It was, you know, it was, it was an issue with the attack sensor and signals coming in that were not correct, but the algorithm couldn't figure it out. So algorithmic issues okay, that resulted in 346 dead. So... You know, I'm not saying that we are killing these people. What I'm saying is that, you know, software is everywhere. Programs are everywhere. Okay? And when programs go wrong, real serious issues occur. People are dying. Money is lost. And, you know, it's estimated that in the U.S. alone, approximately 60 billion annually is wasted on either rewriting code or fixing code or productivity loss or actual damages due to software errors. Okay? But that's monetary. On the flip side, you know, forget about monetary. People die when software makes errors. Okay. So, you know, this class has been all about rigorous proof. Okay. And so I'm urging you to take the time and the effort to prove that your program works fully correctly all the time. Okay. Partially correctly, missing a few boundary cases, people die. Doesn't work all the time, accident. So the only way that you can be sure that your program f works fully correctly all the time is if you can prove that it works. Can you convince me that your program works fully correctly all the time? Take the time to do it. It's worth it. It's worth the effort because people are relying on it. Now, with that, you know, we have the tools to do those things. So use them. That's the happy note. We have the tools now to prove that programs work fully correctly all the time. Use it. Checking out, not just from this lecture, but from the course. Good luck.